Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a white, blue and green or banned colored Broker's Ascendancy deck. This card was suggested to me by one of my supporters on Patreon and this is what I came up with. The enchantment says at the beginning of your end step put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control and a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you control. So ideally we run this in a deck that has a bunch of planeswalkers that can also generate creature tokens. That way we've got a steady supply of creatures to put plus one counters onto as well as planeswalkers to increase their loyalty and that can also speed up their ultimate potentially, which is quite fun to see. And by relying on Planeswalkers, we're also less susceptible to sweeper effects, since we can keep generating more tokens over and over again, and we won't lose our Planeswalkers necessarily in the process. So that's kind of the core philosophy behind this deck. Our Planeswalkers include Archangel Elspeth, the Wandering Emperor, we've got Ren and Seven, even one Tamyo, and then at six mana, the Eternal Wonder, which can also kind of double down as a sweeper effect, which can be pretty useful. So those are the Planeswalkers. Then we also have some cheap creatures we can play early. Ambitious Farmhand finds a Planes, Spirited Companion draws a card. These are just early blockers that can maybe chum block and protect our Planeswalkers, but they can also eventually start picking up plus one counters with Broker's Ascendancy, so curving two drop into Ascendancy can be quite nice. And then we also have Wedding Announcement, another card that benefits from having some cheaper creatures in play to maybe start drawing sooner, but can also eventually pump the team once it transforms into Wedding Festivity. And the 1-1 tokens that we get from Announcement can also pick up additional plus one counters from Broker's Ascendancy to eventually close out the game. And then our removal mostly consists of ossification at two mana and enchantment aura has to enchant a basic land we control so that's why we have five planes an island a forest and three fetch lands to search them up that way we're more likely to have a basic for ossification and then we can exile an opposing creature or planeswalker so it's pretty versatile and then we also have a few sweeper effects with our two copies of sunfall which we actually don't mind running in this deck since even if we have a few tokens ourselves we'll get a larger incubator token afterwards that can also start applying a bit of pressure and then we already mentioned the Eternal Wonder, which can potentially clean up the board with a minus four, where we get to keep our best creature and let the opponent keep their worst one. And especially in this deck, the minus four is quite useful, since we can maybe further protect our Planeswalker by making a 1-1 token end of turn with Wedding Announcement. We can maybe just activate some of our other Planeswalkers to make creature tokens to then protect our Emperor, so it's not exposed to an incoming attack. And then a 2-2 double strike, also very nice once we start loading plus one counters onto it with Ascendancy, or giving it a plus one plus one with a Wedding Festivity. And then we also have two copies of Restoration of Aiganjo, can help us ramp by getting a planes and then putting a land in play on the following turn. Can also just put a companion in play for free, so that can also come in handy. And then eventually the Architect, another source of 1-1 one, one tokens to load plus one counters onto. And then we mentioned our Planeswalkers, two copies of Falco Spara, which is also quite nice here as a source of card advantage that lets us play spells off the top of our deck. Just need to remove a counter from a creature we control in addition to paying their other costs. And between our Ascendancy giving us counters, our Wandering Emperor, and then even a Transformed Incubator token can also be a source of plus one counters that we can remove with Falco to cast spells off the top. We can generate a lot of value. And then we also have a one-off Tamiyo that can also be pretty fun to ultimate. The minus seven is quite achievable with Ascendancy in play. And then we'll get Tamiyo's Notebook token, which will give all our spells a two mana discount and can easily tap it to draw a card every turn. And then Renan 7 is also pretty nice in combination with Archangel Elspeth, since the plus one can mill additional cards into our graveyard while finding lands. And then eventually we can minus six Elspeth, also very easy to achieve with an Ascendancy in play, and to return all non-land permanent cards with mana value three or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. And that includes some powerful three mana enchantments, as well as maybe an ossification to remove something right away, and our two mana creatures. So Archangel Elspeth plus Renan 7 is also pretty nice. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward once you account for all the basic you need to enable ossification. Of course, we're going to run Sparrow's Headquarters as well. And this is my configuration for best of one. If you're playing this in best of three, you may not need Sunset Revelry in the main deck. Can maybe move a few more copies into the sideboard instead. And then I also like cards like Destroy Evil, pretty flexible, can take out larger creatures, or maybe destroy an enchantment. We've got our Disdainful Stroke and Negate to counter the big top end plays from the domain decks, for instance. Negate also useful against opposing Planeswalkers, which were sometimes bad at pressuring, as well as some of the bigger non-creature plays, like various sweepers. And then we've got 
Adlin, which can come in in creature matchups that maybe don't have a lot of creature removal after sideboard, since they might see us with a lot of planeswalkers and creature tokens that uh, don't require a lot of spot removal, then we can maybe juke them out with an Adlin, which is also pretty nice in matchups where the opponent's playing Thalia at 2 mana, since that's a card that's pretty annoying for our deck when we have so many non-creature spells, and now Adlin gives us a decent blocker, as well as a way to maybe close out the game quickly, can also come in in matchups like Mono Red, and then paired with Broker's Ascendancy can close out the game very quickly, knock out Blow, another card alongside Sunset Revelry that shines in the Mono Red matchup, gaining us life and giving us some uh, cheaper plays we can make, and then Loran, another creature that can deal with artifacts or enchantments, Depopulate can be a cheaper sweeper, especially against those aggressive decks, Sunfall might be a little bit too slow, and then we might want Depopulate instead, Teferi, another option that we can bring in as an extra Planeswalker that can generate some tokens and provide extra value, Double Blue, not the easiest to cast, so definitely preferred in matchups where we have time to hit our land drops, and then Sanctuary Warden, also pretty good synergy in this deck, as it will enter the battlefield making a token, drawing cards, and then the token can also pick up extra plus one counters. So these are just uh, some options that you can consider if you're running this deck in best of three. Thalia is definitely going to be an annoying card to face, so be prepared for it. And then uh, there's definitely other tough matchups out there, like the Mono Blue Hottie Jin deck, I can imagine being a pretty tough matchup, as they can try and protect their one creature, and we don't have a lot of instant speed interaction, so even a Destroy Evil there can come in handy. Don't have any graveyard hate, which is something we can potentially make room for. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Can cast a turn 2 ossification, turn 3 ascendancy, hopefully with some planeswalkers coming up. And Falco, also a great combo with the ascendancy, as you could imagine. Put in maybe a multicolored domain deck. So no early targets for ossification. Not being able to counter an Atraxa, also a pretty big drawback, but opponent seems to be stuck on two lands here. So we might be able to get a quick win if we can curve Ascendancy into a few Planeswalkers, although Binding deals with our Ascendancy. Still have Wandering Emperor next. Stomper will ramp. And then we might see Invasion of Zendikar next. Although without another land as their top deck, they wouldn't be able to attack with Stomper yet. So I don't think we need to keep up removal for it necessarily. Now, I drew fetch land, so if I want to guarantee Ren and Seven a next turn, I wouldn't be able to play one of my four drops. But I think we are fine with playing a four drop here. And then I could play Falco first. And then next turn, play Wandering Emperor. Elspeth now also an option. So they do have the extra land, so now an invasion could be pretty bad news. Sunfall instead. Does get around our shield counter. Okay, so in that case, probably go for Wandering Emperor over Elspeth, although there's no creature we immediately need to exile with a minus two. So maybe it's fine to just play our Elspeth. Make a 1 1. And next turn, run on 7. Still gonna be tough if our opponent has an Atraxa in hand eventually that's gonna take over. So that's where if we're playing best of three, cards like Disdainful Stroke would certainly come in handy. It's gonna be an Archangel of Wrath. Not quite enough to finish off our Planeswalker at least. So now we have to decide if we want to keep up Wandering Emperor, make a large token with Ren and Seven. Um, the only drawback is if they can answer the Reach creature Archangel will finish off Ren and Seven, but we do have another one. So maybe that's not a disaster. And just keep plussing here. And next turn could be a good time for wedding announcements, plus maybe also vacation. Another binding can go for a token here. And then Archangel finishes off for Renan 7 at the very least. I'm going for Archangel, so probably see another Archangel of Wrath here, second main. Yep. So that's going to finish off Renan 7. Luckily not enough mana to take out both Planeswalkers here. Okay, so how about Wandering Emperor minus on the tapped Archangel, 
Ossification the other one, and then we can keep plusing Archangel Elspeth. Does leave us vulnerable to a potential 7 drop like Itali or Atraxa. Although in the case of Atraxa we've got bigger problems. So yeah, that seems reasonable to me. And I'll leave two tokens back to maybe block the 2 2. It's gonna be another Sunfall instead. One card left in hand, and they can finish off a Planeswalker 2 here. So they have to decide between Emperor and Elspeth. Just gotta hope that last card or an incoming top deck isn't Atraxa. Ooh, opponent may have activated the wrong uh, incubator token since they could have finished off a planeswalker. Eternal Wanderer isn't bad. We can flick our tokens with the plus one, which essentially will kill the incubator. Or we can play Renan 7, make a large tree folk. This keeps making one ones. Can put a plus one counter on it. And then. Yeah, maybe Eternal Wanderer take out the 3-3s three fine. And there's Atraxa, not what we wanted to see. Revealing Itali as their creature, Invasion as their battle, Herd Migration Sorcery. Could have been worse, but still uh, a lot of card advantage here. So we do have our Eternal Wanderer, which can be an answer to Atraxa if we use the minus four. And our opponent has another creature in play, we can make them sacrifice instead. Although right now that's not the case. So uh, where do we go from here? Definitely don't want to flicker Atraxa with Eternal Wanderer. So yeah, this is pretty tough. Ren and Seven make a Tree Folk. That's going to be a 6-6. Six, six. Can put a counter on it with both Elspeth and Wandering Emperor potentially. I guess one counter is enough since it's still going to trade. Strike fast and, strike hard. and make a samurai now. I brought back. And there's a tally. Finding a stomper and a sunfall. Which they are going to cast. A bit surprising since we can easily deal with a 6 6 here using Eternal Wanderer. Okay, so I imagine that's step one here deal with the 6 6. Ren can plus. Wandering Emperor can make another Samurai. Cycle Headquarters play Announcement. Or keep up another Emperor. Although with a Vigilant Stomper, the minus two is not at its best here. So we'll keep it going. There's still a Herd Migration we know about. That's a bunch of 3-3s. Three and sooner or later our opponent's going to find another Atraxa or Itali. Okay, so now the Eternal Wanderer can minus four. We keep our 2-2 Vigilance, they keep a 3-3 three, three Beast. I guess that was a reason to maybe jump with our Life Linker last turn to gain one, but that's all right. And then a Falco can see what's on top of the deck. Tamio. So don't necessarily want to mill that with Ren and Seven. 
So I can either minus three or just not activate it this turn. And then Elspeth can keep making soldiers. So we can eventually ultimate that as well. And counter on the samurai so that can get in there. And yeah, just gonna pass a turn here. Would love to find another Ascendancy to add loyalty to all the Planeswalkers in play. It's gonna be another Archangel. They can finish off our Eternal Wanderer if they deal 4 damage to it. And that's what they go for. And another Herd Migration, so now we don't have that Sweeper effect available. Okay, so let's take a look in our graveyard. So plusing Ren and Seven does make Archangel Elspeth's ultimate also much better. So that's potentially exciting next turn. We'll just trade off our shield counter, keep our samurai. And on top we see a wedding announcements. So could play that. And then still potentially play Tamio. And ultimate Elspeth. Remove a counter. I'll land on top. Can't play those, but we can mill them. Ooh, double ascendancy. This Archangel Elspeth ultimate is looking great. So let's go for it. Get back ossification as well, double farm hands, exile Archangel of Wrath, I imagine. Couple planes left. And now with double ascendancy, we're gonna ultimate Tamiyo in no time. This can provide a plus one counter. And we're just gonna plus Taimyo here, I think. As opposed to getting back Archangel Elspeth as an option. Alright, pass a turn. Get a bunch of triggers. Tokens first, then counters. And yeah, next turn we can minus 7 Taimyo. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. Managed to outgrind the domain deck onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a pretty slow opening hand without any untapped lands that we get to play on turn two. But I think it's still a keep. We get to hopefully play a companion into wedding announcement. Also need a basic clan for ossification still. And up against a red deck with turn one Swiss spear. All right. So this is going to be a pretty tough matchup, but we have the tools and hideout helps. So don't really need another planes, so we'll get forest, so we have double green for Ren and Seven. And then probably going for wedding announcement here. Although a spell spear might be worth taking out before it transforms. So we can just ossification, play hideout, and then next turn have Wandering Emperor. I like that. Hideout also gaining us some life. Adversary is next. Probably wait for them to attack. And then play Wandering Emperor. Could also double spell, ossification, companion, but let's keep it simple. And then likely exile adversary. Could also just make a samurai, but our opponent likely has a one mana instant to grow Swiss Spear, so we would be putting samurai in front of adversary. Opponent can take it out. Well, it's just minus two. And gain some life back. And then next turn I can potentially get the plus one counter. The opponent's going to play with fire Emperor, so that's taken care of. And we drew a tapped land. 
So let's start with companion, see what we draw. If we draw an untapped land, play announcement. If not, we can reevaluate. So our opponent's stuck on two lands. They could definitely have some scary three or four mana creatures in hand. So I think we hang on to ossification for now, just put some companions in play. And there's our ascendancy. So that could be promising with double companion and wedding announcements, providing some small bodies. So I don't really want a double block. And we might see another instance going upstairs. Opponent has been scrying, keeps on top, so I imagine that's a land and another companion. So, yeah, I think we just go companion plus ascendancy now. And try and generate as much of a board presence as possible. Do I attack? Do I hang back? I guess we'll chill for now. Can maybe set up a triple block on Swiss Pier. We'll see. Ooh, Draconic Destiny. That's unexpected. So now Swiss Pier flies. Can still Ossification. And Archangel Elspeth is also a decent pickup. Elspeth plus Ossification. And then make a Life Linking Token with the plus one. Seems good. And then now companions can attack, I think. To do lifelink on defense. And Elspeth could ultimate next turn. Although not much to get back from the graveyard right now. Chandra dressed to kill. Could make mana still cast a burn spell. They probably want to take out our lifelinker. It's going to be Kumano. Okay, so we're at, yeah, essentially four life, but next turn we get to turn our soldier token sideways, gain life, make another soldier, keep growing the team with ascendancy, and yeah, if our opponent can turn the corner right now, they're going to fall further and further behind. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is definitely ready for an aggressive deck with the revelry. Um, a bit slow out of the gates with two tap lanes. But I think we try it. Farmhands will help us cast our wedding announcement, and then we just need a green source for ascendancy. Opponent green white could be poison, in which case we'll want to draw our sweepers, Thalia instead, so maybe humans. So can't cast announcements. Could also vacation Thalia, which is reasonable. Although we might want to keep it for a card like Adelin, which can actually kill us pretty quickly. And then for now, Farmhand. It's not the most mana efficient turn. Yeah, let's also vacation. Thalia has enough of an impact when we have so many Planeswalkers that uh, it's probably best to get it out of the way. And then next turn we can maybe double spell Farmhand. There's Adelin, Speak of the Devil. And Wandering Emperor, not the best answer to Adelin since it has Vigilance. So we'll get a land, play another farmhand. And then we'll have to find a way to deal with this Adlin Resplendent Cathar. Brutal Cathar exiles farmhand, not the end of the world, better than it's exiling a token for good. And then do I trade? Do have an ascendancy, which is reason not to trade for the one ones, but uh, I think for now probably keeps damage under control. Can buy more time with Sunset Revelry. So we've got our green mana for ascendancy now. So if I play ascendancy and then play Revelry, I'll get maximum value, and then the tokens get to grow immediately. Not bad, and now. Eternal Wanderer is an excellent answer on this board. Can let them keep a token from Adlin and then take out the rest. So, yeah, I don't even think I double block. Could bait out maybe a uh, copy of Iganjo or maybe an opposing Wandering Emperor if they're playing it. So it does have its advantages because I don't think they would be offering this trade if they didn't have something. Alright, trade happens. So now I may not even need to minus four Emperor. 
and their brute transforms. So what's next? We're both at 20. Can just Eternal Wanderer make a token? Don't have the mana to double spell Emperor and Announcement, which would be pretty nice too. Yeah, this seems okay. Our double striker picks up an extra counter right away. Get extra loyalty. Show them the edge of your place. Initiate could blow up our ascendancy if they can accumulate some plus one counters. And a vanguard. Alright, so our opponent's now kind of committing to the board. But that's also kind of running into our minus four. They do get to take out our double striker, but that's alright. So, yeah, let's go ahead and minus four. Opponent can keep their token, which does get around ward. We get to keep our human with two counters, get another planes. Play another announcement and keep up the Wandering Emperor. Although playing it now has its advantages too, getting that extra counter from Ascendancy is probably worth it. And attack. So yeah, I think our opponent's in trouble now. Don't think their green-white human aggro deck has the tools to recover from this. And there we have it, a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I think we can try this. We're missing an extra counter to synergize with Falco. But Companion can draw, got a lot of plus one counters throughout the deck. Opponent mono green so far with turn two Gala greeters. So I have to imagine Sunfall's going to be pretty good at some point. And next turn, Restoration can also put in a Companion. And a Polychronos is next. So yeah, we're just going to try to buy time until we can Sunfall, clear the board, and take over. And we still get to develop our board, so it's not like we need to hold back anything to play around our own Sunfall. That's where Companion also comes in handy. In the control matchups, it's a cheap creature we can maybe load some counters onto to pressure opposing planeswalkers. In creature matchups, it can draw us a card, maybe chum block, bait the opponent into overextending. Although Ren and Realm Breaker is actually pretty annoying for us. Gives them a threat that doesn't die to Sunfall. And Storm the Festival could be dangerous when they get to enough mana to flash it back. So we might have to play Falco to try and take out Ren and Realm Breaker, although Polychronos does have reach. So we might have to Sunfall first anyway, and then maybe use the Incubator token for added pressure. Opponent does run out Willow, guys, so like to see that. And Gallag Readers might pick up a plus one counter now. Nope, still going for treasure. So they can't attack with it. Polychronos also stays back to maybe play around Wandering Emperor. And then, sure, let's put in Spirited Companion. See what else we can draw with it, since I don't need the extra land in play. Revelry the draw. Not the best right now. So I could play Falco here, even though it's likely going to get swept up by Ruin Sunfall. Just because we have another one, and otherwise we're not doing anything here. And that's going to give the opponent more confidence into committing creatures to the board. Like a Vorinclex. Okay. Still need to eventually deal with their Planeswalker, but... Now that it's not threatening an ultimate, it's less dangerous. Blue Chronos attacks, can trump it. Does mean a smaller Sunfall token, but the 4 life is probably worth it. And this way I get to keep the shield counter on Falco to maybe cast something off the top. So we could just Sunfall here, 
I could also pass a turn and then use Wandering Emperor at instant speed, which can make a token out of turn to try and pressure Ren and to Realm Breaker. Yeah, let's try that. Just play a tap line and pass. And this we should be able to use at any point. So yeah, pass a turn. Vorinclax does have a reach. So can't attack into it. So this might be a little bit risky, not just casting the Sunfall. But uh, trying to extract a bit more value out of Falco before he perishes. It's going to be a Nyssa Ascendant Animist. Yeah, not what we wanted to see here. Opponent can ultimate, pump the team, and I don't know if a Wandering Emperor is going to be enough to survive. So, opponent turns the team sideways, cast Emperor, exile Vorinclex. And then, opponent still has 24 damage coming in, so it's not actually lethal. Can triple block Galagreeters, take it out, and then our opponent's gonna have to leave our companion alive, and then we'll likely Sunfall next turn. That seems alright. We'll also get a token from Architect. Although I don't think they've activated Run onto Realm Breaker yet this turn. So our opponent's going to mill. Nature has not abandoned me. But uh, yeah, now we can finish off Ren and cast our Sunfall and finally be in the driver's seat. I suppose we could have uh, dealt one more damage with Companion by plusing Emperor, since I'm not going to minus. And then I think it's time to maybe start holding the Headquarters. In case we flood out, we might want to cycle it. Tributes? That's potentially scary. As a card draw engine here. And we are at 5, so every creature is now a threat. A revelry might also be a decent play here just to gain some life back, get a board presence going. So I could play Elspeth and then play revelry and get maximum value as we don't control any creatures, have fewer cards in hand than the opponent. Playing Falco first would not give us the tokens. Okay, and then make a 1-1. One -one. Make a Samurai perhaps. Would love to find our Ascendancy, that's the type of card that would take this over the top. Invasion of Chandelar, get back Nissa. Yeah, that's uh, pretty threatening here. And Gala Greeters. And Greeters picks up counters from Tribute. Companion of the draw. So probably have to start with Falco, see what's on top of the deck, and then take it from there. Sunfall, which I'm one mana short of casting. Are we dead next turn to a Nissa Ultimate? We might be able to survive. So in that case, play Companion. I can still activate our Incubator token. And a hideout on top. Alright, so I think I still plus here. Wandering Emperor can plus as well on a lifelinker, that's the most likely to keep us alive. I have got new and then no attacks. Yeah, just imagine our broker's ascendancy on this board. If I don't have to animate my token, then I won't. So our opponent's not going for Nyssa quite yet, but they can get another one. Nyssa, of course, also an answer to a Broker's Ascendancy. So this is shaping up to be an interesting matchup. 
Bono could have channeled Buseju, decided to run it out. And Fauna Shaman's next. So don't mind seeing the opponent commit more creatures to the board. But we'll still need to find an answer to that Nissa in hand. Can ultimate Elspeth. Not much to get back with it. And let's just take our turn. Alright, Eternal Wanderer is perfect. Gives us value of Falco. And that way we uh, get to add another Planeswalker to the board. So get rid of a counter here. Can minus four, keep Falco, let the opponent keep probably a Scram Gorger. And then Falco can finish off Renant Realmbreaker. Just gotta watch out that we don't die to Nissan Pumping Scram Gorger. Let's say they draw Forest, that's plus eight, ten damage. Although we can make some more tokens here, including the Incubator. So that seems fine. And then I have to minus four before gaining life with my soldier tokens if I want Falco to finish off Ren because of Polychronos having reach. Okay, so minus four. I'll finish this here and now. Now all these cards going to the graveyard is also good for Elspeth, so I can actually get those back. The uh, companion that is. So maybe that's the play here. Just ultimate Elspeth. And get a remaining planes. Draw ossification. Okay, and there's still a wedding announcement on top, which I should be able to play here. If I go for wedding announcements, I'll get another token, three tokens total. So we're not dead to Nissa Ultimates. And then I can make a samurai. Guards, to me. Okay. So now with an Eternal Wonder on the board, we can certainly control the board a little bit more easily. So with Wonder or Creature returns at the beginning of the next end step, so we can maybe save Falco and then Sunfall. Double Tribute in play. And next turn our opponent's threatening to flashback Storm the Festival as well. So the game's far from over. What's on top? Ossification. And do I want to draw Ossification? Not especially. So maybe just discard fetch lands, shuffle the deck, still have a couple basics left. Really looking for Ascendancy above all else. Another wedding announcement on top. So, what are we looking at? I think we're gonna try to set up the play I mentioned with Eternal Wonder and Falco. So, plus here, get an attack in for four. Then play wedding announcement over the top. Then plus Wonder, then Sunfall. And I do want to attack with everyone, so I keep my token larger from Sunfall. And then end of turn we can animate the larger of the incubator tokens and pass it back. Okay. 
Still can't feel too comfortable when Nissa can threaten a massive overrun effect. Fetch lands, so opponent still has the mana to flash back the uh, Storm the Festival here. Maybe thinning out the deck first. And there it is. Alright, let's see what they can find. Nissa is not an option since converted mana cost is 7, as opposed to Storm only finding 5 or cheaper. Titania, without Argoth, luckily. All their opponent does get to refuel nicely, thanks to double tribute. Wandering Emperor on top. So, plus one counter on Falco, that can attack. Do we plan to use Ossification this turn? Opponent getting any creature they want with Fauna Shaman's kind of scary. Yeah, I think I do want to attack with two creatures so we can actually draw with Wedding Announcement this turn. So these two can attack. We'll see if they're interested in double blocking. They are not. So in that case, just play Wedding Announcements. Keep up Wandering Emperor. What to do with Eternal Wanderers? is another interesting question. Probably just make a Samurai at this point. We are close to crossing the finish line. But I might have to Ossification just so we don't die to an Overrun and some plus one counters here. And then I imagine Fauna Shaman's more threatening than Titania without an Argoth on the battlefield. So play announcements. And then we still have the mana for Wandering Emperor at instant speed and maybe transforming our Incubator token. Still no Broker's Ascendancy in sight, so still all four in the deck. Gala Greeters is acceptable. So we're not dead to an Overrun. And uh, should be able to go wide enough now to just end the game. Consuming Blob does get to make an extra token, also very good with double tribute. Gala Greeters gains 2 up to 8. Yeah, this has been a slugfest. Doomscar Warrior can also provide some card advantage. So our opponent would have 5 blockers to our 8 attackers. But uh, I guess there is an ossification on top of the deck to remove 1. And then Eternal Wanderer could also flicker the token to essentially remove it. So I think we'll be able to get there. Run away. You'll be safer. Watch for and Gala Greeters triggers, but they've already gained life. Opponent's also close to decking, 14 cards remain. So we've seen most of their deck. So it's definitely more mid-rangey than I assumed it to be originally, with Nissa being a great finisher. Alright, let's cast our ossification now. Clear. Consuming Blob is fine. And then this can get rid of the token. Plus one counter. And I guess Run and Seven could also maybe mill and cast something else off the top, but let's just turn the team sideways because I'm pretty sure we have lethal. So yeah, even without Broker's Ascendancy we can get there, but you can certainly imagine the damage it would have done this game with all our tokens, Planeswalkers, getting better and better. And also got to see the versatility of Sunfall in this deck. Being able to uh, kind of surprise other creature strategies. Planeswalkers make it easier to not overextend into your own sweeper. 
And then there's even some synergy with the plus one counters and Falco once we animate the tokens. Looks like our opponent may have disconnected here. And they explode. Awesome. So we eventually got there against Mono Green Midrange. So yeah, we got to see our Bant Ascendancy deck in action, and overall I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. It is definitely a more mid range -y strategy, so it is potentially going to improve even more in best of three, where you can potentially lower the curve of the deck against the aggressive strategies, maybe board in some counter spells to deal with sweepers and other expensive non-creature spells, could even board in counters like Disdainful Stroke to hit cards like Atraxa. So there's no shortage of options if you're playing a three-color mid-range deck in standard, but just want to make sure you still have that core of creatures and planeswalkers to go alongside your ascendancy to try and get as much value from it as possible. Now that doesn't mean there's not going to be bad matchups out there. Thinking of the mono blue Hadi Jin deck, that's definitely a matchup that's going to be difficult to beat with a more mid-range strategy that doesn't have access to a lot of instant speed removal. Might need graveyard hate to have a chance there. And then maybe a blue green poison deck that I featured recently is also going to be a tough matchup since that requires more instant speed removal or a faster clock, which is not really what our deck is capable of. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always. Have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.